Hey everybody, it's Mark again, and I hope that you're enjoying the uh, uh, video set that I'm creating on uh, Cuckoo Clock Repair for Beginners. Um, it takes me a lot of time to um, um, uh, make these videos, and then to edit the videos using ClipChamp, and then to post the videos. And uh, I've been up all night um, after working on the uh, the uh, 1950s count wheel musical clock. And as you can see, the weights are dropping evenly. Um, I've been up all night um, editing and posting that video, and it's still not done yet. So... Um, I'm going to take the time, sorry, to do another quick video. Um, with Cuckoo Clock Repair, a lot of times you're going to get into uh, novelty cuckoo clocks, novelty style cuckoo clocks. I have to clarify that. There's a lot of people out there who are going to say, that this is not a cuckoo clock. That a cuckoo clock has to cuckoo in order for it to be considered a cuckoo clock. Well, I beg to differ with you on that. And the reason why, if you go to a, um, a German clock sales site to purchase a cuckoo clock, you will find these novelty cuckoo clocks under the heading cuckoo clock. Um, they still work in the same fashion. They're weight driven. And so um, uh, they basically fall into the class of a cuckoo clock but it's a novelty cuckoo clock so kick back grab something to drink grab something to eat grab something to smoke relax and hopefully you'll enjoy this video but most of all I hope that you learn something now I go help out a friend of mine Ever so often, and I drive quite a few miles to get to his place. And I do it because I enjoy his company. I enjoy talking to him and his wife. And uh, he has some uh, uh, some uh, issues that I'm not going to discuss. But anyway... <coughs> He tries to offer me money. I don't accept it unless I'm uh, unless I'm needing some gas money because I'm on a fixed income and it's towards the end of the month and I'm broke. But typically, as part of my service, he gives me clocks and he's given me lots of clocks. And this is one of the clocks that he's given me. Um, this is a novelty cuckoo style clock. The, um, the novelty clocks typically take a wire pendulum with a round bob on it they take one weight typically and it's normally a uh, a 175 gram weight or it could be a 275 gram weight it's whatever he picked up uh, in this case but um, 
Let me give you the history be behind novelty clocks. People go to Germany to the Black Forest. They go on vacation. They go through all the shops of clocks and they dream of owning a $15,000 fancy carved all the bells and whistles cuckoo clock but they just spent all their money traveling to Germany so they um, they can't afford it or maybe they don't want to afford it but they want to bring a souvenir home with them. So they make s clocks like this to sell as a souvenir clock, but they're typically the kind of clocks that are not made to work on. You have quarter hour cuckoo clocks, and I might show you those in a little bit, that will cuckoo one time every 15 minutes uh, typically they're bellows and I've, I've got several YouTube videos out there on novelty clocks so if I don't discuss it in this video check out those videos but uh, like I said typically they're not designed to be worked on but we've gotten lucky and this clock, and uh, I'll show you why. Um, first of all, you can, the, the main body of the clock is normally glued on or stapled on uh, to the uh, uh, housing, face housing here. And then if it's got bellows in it, they're glued in. The movement, is normally nailed in from the front so you would have to remove this section of the clock in order to get to the movement the movement is normally has tabs that are bent over to uh and four different sections and in, in all four corners of the movement <clears throat> that are bent over or these tabs are twisted so they're they're not easily um, you can't easily take them apart and a lot of times if you twist those tabs they'll break off but this clock is designed by Emil Schmeckenbecker, and it says so right here. And uh, in this particular case, there's nuts to take the movement apart. But before you could take that movement apart, you have to get it out of the out of the uh, uh, case well the hands are screwed on and here me and my daughter went to uh, Andy's ice cream parlor I believe that's where we got these at and so I used the, the ice cream cup to put my parts in Hands are off. Movement still don't want to come out. And that's because you have to take this off of the clock. And in this case, they're screwed on. So uh, if I can undo these screws. Hopefully I can. So stand by. There's two screws, one here and one here. I'm going to see if I can get them out. They've been on there for a while. I got one screw out. I grabbed a bigger screwdriver to get this other screw out, and it's coming out. 
but it's nice and rusted. They've been on there for a while. Email Smackenbecker went out of business in the 80s. So the face shield dial um, is off. We'll put that in the cup. And now we have access to the movement here and in this case the movement is uh is pushed down into the wood most times they are nailed down into the wood or screwed down into the wood but before i could take this movement out i need to take the chain off so let me do that real quick And then I should be able to take a screwdriver and pry this up from the housing. And voila, here's the movement. And you want to uh, uh, kind of get an idea of how this movement is on. I thought there for a second that the ratchet wheel wasn't working, but it is working. And so, uh, like I said, right here it says, Emil Smeckenbecker, Germany. It shows Germany right there. And so, uh, taking the nuts off. They're not that tight. It's a thumb type of a nut. It's got grooves on the on the nut, so you can loosen them up pretty easily. So um, I'm going to see if I could take this apart, so you can see what it looks like there's three main gears your first gear or your ratchet wheel your second gear and your escapement wheel and so uh and then the virgin crutch assembly that's what it looks like before you put the uh rear plate on so we're going to go ahead and take this all apart and uh there's the hour tube and like i said the ratchet wheel is working Here's the uh, ratchet assembly that catches it. It's catching these little um, pieces of metal here. And so we're going to put this in the cleaner. And uh, when it's done cleaning, we're going to put it back together, oil it, and while it's in the cleaner, I'm going to clean up the case. Because I just chose Howard's beaded wax, I'm going to use that. I'm just going to squirt a little dab on it and then uh, rub it in. Like I said, this is a wax on, wax off type thing. And you can already see the difference in what it looks like. You know, um, 
different people choose different cleaners. Uh, some people love Howard Beaton wax. Some people love New Life Furniture Mask. Some people love Old English Oil. You know, to me, they all work about the same. Uh, if you were to take the time to, um, uh, to take all the wood parts apart and clean them up, I think, personally, you wouldn't see that much of a difference in what you use. And what you use is totally up to you. Before, after. I bet if I grab some Old English oil and put it on this side, you wouldn't really notice the difference. Old English oil. New rag. Old English oil. Howard Beaten Wax. Let me get some light in this situation. Howard Beaded Wax, Old English Oil. The only reason that you're seeing a difference is because this wood right here is all damaged. So, I want to put some Howard Beaded Wax on top of here. And compare it to the uh, the side. Now with Howard or Howard's bead and wax, you have to rub it in, and then you have to rub it off after it dries for a little bit. Old English oil, Howard bead and wax. Old English oil, Howard's bead and wax. And again, you have to let it soak in and then wait a few minutes and then rub it off so um, what you choose is totally up to you um, I personally think they all work about the same except for Old English oil you rub it on or you pour it on you spread it in and you leave it. Um, it's a lot easier to work with. Um, some people say it causes mold. I've been using old English oil ever since I started collecting antiques back in 1999. And I've never had that issue. And again, I like cleaning up all the wood. You know, wood whatever you use is going to be better than nothing because wood is better it gets thirsty and so uh, as long as you add something to the wood it revives it The pendulum bob is typically made out of wood, so you might as well clean that up too.
if you do not have a pendulum and Bob there you could pretty well make a Bob out of anything as long as it's not too heavy my friend that I go and see I repaired a novelty clock for him and I spell out his name in a piece of wood and I carved it out the it was like this big and then I took a drill bit a small drill bit and drilled a hole all the way through his name and then took a piece of wire that I made up shoved it through the name put a bend in the pendulum bo uh, pendulum uh, leader wire and uh, use that. My daughter, I used uh, a letter, uh, her first initial of her first name. My other daughter and her husband, I spelt out their last name, which is six letters. And uh, made a pendulum bob that way. A friend of mine, uh, her parents used to own a video store and they used to hand out these little wooden style coins that had their, it said token, but it had their phone number and it had the name of the video store. Uh, she gave me one of those tokens and in return, I took that token and made a pendulum bob using that token, and it works just fine. So you could basically use anything you want to make a pendulum bob. Um, so wood's all cleaned up. The movement should almost be cleaned up. So... Um, I still need to inspect the chain. Now, I told you that one day cuckoo clocks are very lenient on bushing wear. These things are even more lenient on bushing wear. But because I do what I do, I take a toothpick to all the holes, all the pivot holes. To clean out any dried up oil that is on the pivot holes or in the pivot holes. And as you can see, the toothpick is dirty. And I had this, uh, I had to install a, a deadlock in my daughter's door. This is the cutout from that door. It does really well in in using it for um, to ins to work on clocks like these. Great wheel goes down first. As you can see, the pinion gear on the great wheel matches up with this wheel. Then the second wheel. Then the escapement wheel or the third wheel. And then the virgin crutch assembly. And then the rear plate. 
that you guide up for the Virgin Crutch Assembly. And then, just like every other movement, you want to start all the nuts. Once you start all the nuts, everything will go together smoothly. Now, don't be forcing the nuts. You just kind of find out which gear is um, is too high, and you put it in its place. Second wheel was too high. The great wheel was too high. And everything should pop into place when I get everything um, to where it belongs. That's the wrong nut, Mark. You don't want to be putting that on there. Why didn't y'all tell me that was the uh, minute hand nut? Get the right nut and it'll work better. Except for I'm not holding my lip right. There we go. This ice cream container is kind of too small for my big German hands. And then you got to kind of make sure that all the pivots are in the holes. The escapement wheel is not in its hole. But once you get everything in place, you should be able to... Uh, give the great wheel a little or even the second wheel a little bit of a a, a a turn and everything pops into place but um you also you want to do an end shake on all the gears because this is a novelty clock this movement can bend really easily and if you don't have any end shake then um, it's not going to work properly for you and here I got the um, let me turn this camera around so you can see. I've got the uh, second wheel and the great wheel is not lined up properly. The second wheel teeth are not lined up with the great wheel. Uh, sorry. I'm looking at things trying to show you and I got the camera position wrong I got the second wheel 
is not lining up with the great wheel pinion. The pinion are these little bitty wheels. Uh, this is a pinion. This is a wheel. This is a pinion gear. The second wheel is not lined up with the great wheel. So what I'm going to do is loosen up the nuts on the bottom half and pry the lower plate just a little bit because I don't have any inch shake in the second wheel. That's what I'm getting at. And once I put the great wheel in properly with the second wheel, I will have in shake. Or did I put them upside down wrong? I think that's what I did. I'm going to take this thing back apart. Like I said, it's, I've been up all night. And I might have put the second wheel in the wrong spot. So let's try this again. Great wheel. should have taken pictures it's been a late late night just trying to help you all out with these uh, videos but I just happen to have another movement that I can compare to and I had it right I just for some reason the second wheel pinion was not lining up properly so I'm going to do it again Here I say to y'all, pictures are your friends, and uh, I'm not taking them. That's because I can normally figure things out, but I'm not normally figuring things out on video. I guess we all live and learn. Once I get the escapement wheel, that all the other gears popped out of place. I'm going to put the nuts back on, and this time, things should work better. 
the second wheel was in a bind. And like I said, you always uh, want to test for end shake. Even in a small novelty clock like this, you should have end shake. If you don't have end shake in all the gears, your clock will not run. To include the Virgin Crutch Assembly. If it doesn't have end shake in it, your clock will not run. It will have in shake in it this time. Let me point this camera so you guys can see. Moves up and down. Scaling wheel moves up and down. Virgin crutch assembly moves up and down. Great wheel moves up and down. So now I can hand tighten these nuts. Put some pressure on the great wheel, and the virgin crutch assembly is ticking away. But the movement is up in the air, uh, straight up in there like this. And you see how the virgin crutch assembly is pointed at maybe the 7 o'clock position, the very end of it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend between here and here, so the very end of it gets to the six o'clock position. And now I'm going to oil the movement. Get out my little bitty jar Tylenol bottle of oil. Now you could use a, a piece of uh, um, wire that you flatten out the end of the wire to, to grab a drop of oil. You can use a toothpick to grab a drop of oil. I need to grab... I'll just grab this cloth real fast. And the only thing you're doing is putting a minute drop of oil onto each pivot hole. I'm trying to give you a light. So you can see what the heck I'm doing. I'm taking the toothpick and I'm smashing the end of it. And that smashed end of toothpick or broken end of toothpick will allow me to put that toothpick into the oil and place a drop of oil on each pivot. And if you get too much on the movement, take that rag and wipe it off.
like there I got too much on the plate I'm gonna take this rag and wipe it off because it doesn't need to be on the plate I'm also going to put a drop of oil not only on the spring but I'm also going to put a drop of oil inside here where it ratchets and that way it ratchets easier I'm also going to put a drop of oil this right here is called the birch assembly on the bottom of that birch assembly is the entry pallet and the exit pallet I'm going to put a drop of oil on each of the pallets. And then after I oil the pallets, I'm going to make sure that oil gets spread throughout the escapement wheel. putting the hour tube back on. This right here would be considered the minute wheel with minute pinion for this clock. And now the next step is to put this back in to this wooden platform after I put my oil up. so I don't make a mess. Sorry, the next step is to put this chain on. Now you can put the chain on later if you want, but it's easier to put the chain on now while the movement is out of the case. You don't have any links on it. You don't have the uh, uh, washer on it or the hook. Sorry. Run the divide in the chain in half, and then. Putting that chain down in these holes. And then putting the other chain down in its hole. Now it's time to put the movement back inside the little wooden case. And remember we pried it out. There's these little, on this movement, there's these little tabs that go in. And the movement is back in the case. The chain is on. The next step is to, uh, because we got the uh, hour pipe on, you don't want to forget that, is to go ahead and put the base back on with the two screws that we have. So I'm going to do that. And off camera. The uh, screws are connected. Our next step is to put the uh, the hook and the washer on this chain 
but, but you have to figure out which one it is. The ratcheting side would take the washer. So uh, I'll grab the washer out of here. And a link and put them back together. And these things are made of metal. They can break with you separating them and put them back apart, separating them and put them back apart. So, if you break them, don't worry about it. Grab another one, separate it, and uh, continue on. I don't like this washer. It is separated. And so it could come off. And so I'm probably going to grab a different washer and put on this thing. Because I don't want it coming off. But in the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and put the, uh, the link, um, the hook for the weight on. So the chain is done. You want to be careful as you're winding it up that the uh, ch chain doesn't come off the ratchet wheel. I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, hands on. You want to make sure that this uh, hour tube is down catching the uh what it's supposed to catch because it's, if it's up in the air and this is just a simple hand here um the nut is what goes down and holds it in place and uh No washer, we used everything. So, next step is to um, put a weight on this thing and to show you it's taken away. And if it's not taken away, you have to adjust the uh, virgin crutch assembly some to get it taken away. I should be able to tilt this thing and it starts ticking away. I don't know if y'all can see what I'm doing or not. There's taken away with me tilting the movement some. I mean, 
bringing the movement frontwards, but when I bring it backwards, it stops. If you tighten your hands up too tight, it will stop the movement. Loosen the nut on the hand and it will stick away, at least it should. But anyway, the what you have to do is come up with a device to hold it, put a level on it, to hold it, put a level on it, and then adjust the virgin crutch assembly so you can get it taken away in, um, in beat. And then after you get it taken away and beat, you, you add the pendulum bob. You add the, uh, the pendulum leader with bob and hang it up on your wall. But, um, And of course, it has the door that you slide on, and I I will clean this with some uh, cleaner also, and you hang it on your wall with that hole. Really quick, I want to show you different types of uh, uh, novelty clocks. Here's a quarter hour cuckoo quail clock. It's a quarter hour cuckoo quail clock because it has this uh, four leaf clover type system on it that every time this rotates one quarter of an hour, it cuckoos one time and one time only. And this is the way they typically are. They're nailed in from the front. The front is typically glued on. These bellows, in this case, are built into the into the system, into the clock. Um, and they've got this contraption. Like I said, I've got other videos out there. The left bellow lifts the right bellow. Then there's this contraption that holds the that uh, that connects to the bird wire but it also connects to this this nail right here that when this coos this wire hits this contraption which causes this bellow to come down to get the second cuckoo uh, and here's another novelty style clock that currently I don't have the movement in it, but this is the most wanted style novelty clock because it's got the man and the woman. I'm sorry, I'm having camera issues here. It's It's got the man and the woman to tell the weather. When the woman is out, you got clear weather. When the man is out, it's raining. When they're both in the doorway, it's fair. And they could be quarter hour cuckoo clocks or they can just be just a, a clock like uh, the one that we just worked on is where they just have a movement and a chain and a weight and in this case it's quarter hour cuckoo clock because of the bird. But there's all kinds of novelty style cuckoo, uh, clocks that are in the cuckoo 
family. There's the owl, moving owl, uh, moving eyes owl, cuckoo clock, like I showed you in a different video. There's all kinds of novelty style clocks that are considered in the cuckoo family. Some people would disagree what I say. Go to a web page, a German web page, or go to Germany and go inside a cuckoo shop and you will find these novelty clocks for sale. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. It's not as long as the last video I'm posting. Uh, novelty cuckoo clocks are great because... Novelty style cuckoo clocks are great because... Typically, they only take one weight. And they're so small that you can put them between your cuckoo clocks. Like if you have a bunch of cuckoo clocks like I have. <clears throat> Here's a novelty cuckoo clock. Here's a novelty cuckoo clock. Here's a novelty cuckoo clock, which has got the bouncing lady. Here's a novelty cuckoo clock. It's a Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And, and all these Lux clocks are considered pendulet cuckoo clocks. And so um, there's all kinds of novelty cuckoo clocks. One of the most uh, uh, hard to find novelty cuckoo clocks. Um, you pull the string, the music plays, the light bulb's supposed to come on, the battery is loose. Let me, uh, stand by let me fix the battery. No, it's not taken away. I don't have half my, I don't have hardly any of my clocks taken away. Um, and there's a reason behind that. But you pull the string, the light comes on, the music plays that you wind from up here, and it's a novelty cuckoo clock. Um, this glass door is removable. And they cost around $150. Uh, they were made in the, I want to say, 30s and 40s. This is a baller and son, I believe. The same people that made the 1880 uh, cuckoo clock that I showed you. Here's a novelty style cuckoo clock, this Papo uh, uh, clock with the moving eyes. And they're, they get pretty expensive. These are novelty style cuckoo clocks. And so, again, they fall into the cuckoo clock family they're made typically in Germany. Uh, not all clocks, not all cuckoo clocks are made in Germany. But the most sought after cuckoo clocks are made in Germany and the Black Forest. And so, um, again, I hope you all like this video set. If you did like this video, Please hit the subscribe button, the like, the comment, notification bell. And stay tuned for the next video set. I'm not for sure exactly what I'm going to do yet, but I will teach you things. And may God bless each and every one of you.